Hey everyone, Douglas here, and welcome back to the MMT Macro Trader in this market recap for Friday, June 2nd, 2023. It's been a while since I've done a market recap. I gotta get back into the habit of doing these, and I figured, you know what? What is a better day than today with the absolute shocking macro data that was dropped this morning? The non-farm payrolls coming in way higher than expected. What a better day than today to go ahead and get back into the swing of things with the market recap. So we're going to start with the payroll data that came out today, leaving Wall Street stunned, beating expectations by a mile. The monetarists, the neoclassicals, their heads are spinning. They don't understand what is going on. But look, if you have been following MMT at all, if you've been following the MMT macro trader, people like Warren Mosler, you know exactly what's going on. There is nothing that is happening outside of expectations. This is exactly what you, you would expect in a, rate, in a rate hike regime that we've been seeing by the Fed. We're going to get into those details. You know, I've been in a few spats recently on Twitter, obviously a lot of anti-MMT folk coming at me, but even the MMTers themselves, I see so many MMTers that I don't think fully grasp what is being said by people like myself and Warren Mosler and how high rates and the transmission from high rates to a hot economy occurs. We're going to go over those details. I'm going to try and lay it out as, as clearly as possible and also clear up some confusion. We're going to dive into that in just a second, uh, but also of note today, on the back of that jobs data, we saw markets absolutely lift off you know if you're a patreon member you're well aware that we have been uh, we have been eyeing a big move higher here 4300 has been a short-term target for a little while now really from the end of last year onto this point we have been uh, we have been bullish i've been long waiting for this moment to play out and we're finally seeing uh, the real acceleration in markets that we expected not only because of the higher rates uh, but also just a lot of government spending still coming on board especially after we kind of rounded the corner at the end of the year last year we've been seeing the fiscal flows really come on board pushing markets higher today was uh, absolute lift off going uh, going towards our short-term target of about 4300 and look i continue to expect markets to go higher in the long run here now that we're past the debt ceiling was there some maybe some damage done to the debt ceiling, maybe some things to be concerned about? Yes, but for the most part, at least in the here and now, uh, those fiscal flows are going to continue. And, uh, and more importantly, the economy continues to run hot, which is exactly what we would expect in a high rate, uh, in a high rate environment. Again, I'm going to get into those details in just a second. The other thing I want to point out, too, about the market today is really kind of for the first time, we saw some way better than expected data, right, that lifted the market higher, right? The market continue to push higher on better than expected economic data for the majority of 2022 for the first uh, first few months of 2023 every time some way hotter than expected data came out we actually saw that kind of spook the market short term before ultimately the market pushed higher out of fear that the fed is going to kind of continue to rate uh, do the rate hike thing I think it's starting to, 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 to come into kind of the full calculation of the market world that maybe the rates aren't doing exactly what <laughs> exactly what most practitioners think the rate should be doing. Have they grasped what rates are actually accomplishing? No, but I think they're starting to think that, you know what, maybe the Fed isn't going to cause the recession uh, that uh, that was originally anticipated with those rates. So I think we're back to a full bullish regime. I think the, uh, I mean, I think what we're going to continue to see is compression heading into major macro data announcements. And ultimately, once the dust settles, we're going to see uh, the markets continue to push higher now that we're in this kind of more uh, bullish regime, as opposed to lower, uh, with this, which is what we saw when we were in a more bearish regime. Again, bearish mainly because of the uh, of the massive hit we saw to the fiscal flows uh, going all the way back to April of 2022 and never really resolved until kind of that June to uh, October period when things started to uh, things started to turn around. So that's how I'm seeing the markets. I continue to be very bullish here. I think uh, obviously 4,300 uh, was our, our, our short-term target. We clicked that. I think 4,500 is uh, is highly likely at this point. And uh, assuming there are no major changes coming out of Washington, no major curveballs uh, coming our way, I can kind of continue to see things churn higher from here. But let's go back to the interest rate discussion. And I want to spell this out as clear as possible uh, and uh, yeah, hopefully avoid <laughs> avoid any confusion in terms of uh, in terms of uh, what the rate hikes are actually doing. I've written out some notes. I'm going to read off some notes here as we go along and uh, and make sure I hit the high points. All right. First things first, I, I want to be very, very clear that my analysis is descriptive. I'm trying to describe the macro economy through the lens of MMT so we can make predictions on what is going to happen 
in the future. Ultimately, uh, my goal is to understand, more importantly than anything else, where are markets going to head into the future? So that is that is the lens that I'm looking uh, looking through, and, and that is what I'm trying to understand. I am not trying to be prescriptive here. I'm not trying to prescribe some sort of policy that should be done. I understand very well that rate hikes are regressive. I understand that inflation hurts the poor. I understand all of these things. I think the worst policy decision that can be made right now is to continue the rate hike cycle. I'm not for the rate hike cycle. I think we should bring rates back down to zero and that spending should be targeted towards increased production, towards job growth, uh, towards infrastructure expansion, all that sort of stuff. That's what I would like to see. But that is outside of my control. What is in my control is understanding how to apply the tools and the framework for analysis that MMT provides us to predict where markets are going to be tomorrow, next week, next month, next year. This is a descriptive analysis, okay? So I'm not saying it's a good thing for society. It's not. <laughs> but that's not my goal here to preach what's good for society, at least from a market standpoint. We get into that on the Wednesday live streams. If that's something you want to join us for, by all means, check that out. But for the purpose of this, we want to understand where markets are headed. And that is the framework for which I'm going to now dive into the whole idea of why higher interest rates are actually putting upward pressure on the entire economy, on markets, why we continue to see a hot labor market, why we continue to see an overall hot economy here. Step number one, interest rates, when they go higher, increase <laughs> interest payments, right? Pretty simple stuff, okay? There is an increase in the interest income when the government has to spend that now higher, it has to, has to now essentially spend that money out uh, on the interest payment that goes to the private sector, okay? At this point, it is, I mean, we're talking almost $100 billion a month at this point in terms of interest payments to the private sector from the government just for bondholders. I can show you that from the monthly treasury sta monthly treasury statement this is for april uh so i mean we're, we're already a month behind and it only continues to increase but we were at just shy of 400 billion dollars in net interest for uh fiscal year you know i'm realizing this is fiscal year so this would have started in october but either way 400 uh almost uh almost 400 billion dollars from fiscal year 23 forward we're getting pretty darn close to uh to hitting almost 100 billion dollars a month uh, 62 billion last year it's only going to continue to increase as uh, as more and more bonds are going to be issued at the higher interest rates and interest rates are only going to continue to go up from here as the fed thinks it's going to take the necessary steps to continue to fight inflation by raising those interest rates this is a massive transfer from the public sector to the private sector it becomes private sector savings now that's step that's step one the next thing that happens is that the higher interest rate increases the term structure of prices. Now, this is a little bit tricky, but just, just, just follow with me here. When you get a higher interest rate, the cost of doing business into the future increases, right? If you have a business where you have to borrow, you now have to plan out next year, the year after that, five years out, 10 years out, and you have to lay out your borrowing costs throughout that time. At a 0% interest rate, $1,000 is exactly this borrowed today is exactly the same cost as $1,000 borrowed 10 years from now. At a 10% interest rate, $1,000 is about $2,500 10 years from now. That is the term structure of prices. Everything is made more expensive into the future. You can also see this in commodities as well. This also, this uh, phenomenon also occurs in commodities where a commodity where the future price of a certain commodity is more expensive and it goes up with, uh, with uh, uh, interest rates. So I can show you these charts right here. Here's the gold term structure again. This is the, 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 the next, this is the forward month divided by uh, the month after that, right? So two months forward, one month forward divided out. And you can see the term structure of that pushes higher as rates increase. So you can see during the uh, the rate hike cycle from 2016 through 2018, we saw this term structure of gold push higher. More recently, we've seen it push higher once again. Now, this has nothing to do with the underlying price of the commodity 
per se. There are you know, a thousand different factors that might factor into the price of the spot price of that commodity on any given day. We're talking about the term structure prices, right? We're talking about the future cost of doing business being more expensive. That is what we are talking about. We're not talking about kind of CPI inflation here. We're talking about the term structure of prices in terms of the cost of doing business into the future. You can see this across the board on various commodities. Wheat is another one. Again, term structure prices, the future cost pushes higher. This has nothing to do with the spot price today, but what the term structure looks like. So the term structure prices, the future cost of doing business is now more expensive in a high interest rate regime. This shouldn't be terribly uh, groundbreaking stuff here, terribly uh, controversial ideas here, but where it does get controversial. So, I mean, I think most people understand that higher interest rates cause higher prices in the future, where a lot of people, I think, slip up in this, or not slip up, but kind of where the stumbling block is in this thought process is that, well, yeah, if prices are going to be more expensive, if the cost of doing business is going to be more expensive in the future, then that's going to slow business growth down. It's going to be more difficult to continue the expansion that we're seeing. But that's why the first part of this is so important because the necessary income to continue to support that higher price structure is being supplied via the income, uh, the, the interest income channel. That is why we start with higher interest rates, just put more money into the private sector. And then you get this, and then you get this term structure prices that pushes higher, and that term structure prices get supported. Part of that term structure prices is also wages. We see wage pressure push higher, right? Everything starts to get pushed higher. The entirety of the term structure prices, uh, term structure prices pushes higher. So we see this at every level push higher. And again, the spot price today may or may not be, uh, may, may or may not be higher. That's not the point. The point is the future cost of doing business is higher and that higher cost is supported by the additional interest income, which means the demand remains. We're not seeing a dip in demand. Now, the next question might be, or kind of the next defeater to this whole idea is that, well, the interest income goes into the hands of those with a low propensity to spend or a high propensity to save. And that is true enough. I don't deny that that's the case, but here's the thing. We still live in a capitalist economy, right? If you're just going to sit on that extra interest uh, income and just reinvest it, say, in bonds, someone else is going to come and try and <laughs> compete you out of whatever industry you might be in, right? So there are still competitive forces for growth that still exist. Uh, labor markets, people still now need, because they see the term structure prices push higher, they now know that if they want to get a home, uh, in the next few years or upgrade their house that they have, they need to bring in even more income. They start demanding that income or they say they're going to leave. And when you're in a hot, uh, relatively hot labor market like we are, what's going to happen? Either that demand isn't met by the employer and that person goes somewhere else or that demand is met. Well, what's that employer going to do? Say, nope, I'm not going to meet your higher wage or I'm going to start taking wages down and you're going to leave me and I'm going to lose my talent? No, because they, they would lose the capitalist game. They'd be out of business. They wouldn't have employees to operate, right? So yeah, they're going to meet that higher wage demand. And how are they going to get that done? What income are they going to have? What revenue are they going to have? What they're going to have the additional income that is being added to the private sector because of the increase in the treasury or in the interest payments on the treasuries and the bills. That is how it happens, right? The other thing it does too, is it also helps recapitalize banks. Banks hold a lot of treasuries and they also get that treasury income. And that ends up when that, when those treasury payments uh, go out, that ends up as part of their additional equity that kind of buffs their capital structure. It allows them to expand their balance sheets going forward. And so it makes it easier for them to create new loans for business. And again, continue to support the higher term structure prices into the future. And that is why we continue to see a hot economy. Now, I'm gonna finish reiterating where I started with this. Is this a good way of doing business? No. Is this effectively trickle-down economics? Yes, this is exactly what's happening. We are in a trickle-down world. Is it a good thing? No, again, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna <laughs> reiterate it one more time. It's not a good thing for society. This is very regressive, right? Absolutely, the winners are winning and the losers are losing in big ways. 
and they are getting repelled faster and faster every single day. I don't deny that. I don't want high interest rates, but it doesn't change the fact that high interest rates are not dampening demand. They are not dampening growth. None of that has been observed. Not an ounce of that has been observed. The first rate hike happened like March 17th of 2022. Since then, we've seen nothing but continued growth in this economy, nothing but better than expected outcomes left and right. Every single week, another macro data drop and it's better than expected. Another earning season, better than expected. It is all because the Federal Reserve policymakers have the interest rate thing backwards and we're only going to continue to see a hot economy until the Fed finally starts to take the foot off, uh, foot off the gas on the interest hikes. I think that is actually going to be the end game is the Fed will finally maybe see something that they determine is enough to take their foot off the uh, gas and then it will be uh, everything in reverse. They might start to lower interest rates and that entire thing begins to unravel and that is enough to kind of prick the bubble, as they say, and can start to uh, can start to unwind things. But as it stands right now, it doesn't look like it's uh, you know in, anywhere near happening. And so until something like that does happen, I'm going to continue to stay bullish on this market. I think we're going to continue to see the S&P push uh, higher and higher. And uh, I think we're going to continue to see better than expected data uh, continue to come through. Again, it's not... <laughs> It's not ideal, but it's still going to be better than expected, and it's still going to support. Uh, it's still going to support a, a, a relatively hot economy continuing to grow. All right, I think that is the <laughs> as a point that uh, that I wanted to make tonight. So let me know if you got any questions in the comments below. If I didn't explain anything as well as I could have, or if you just disagree, you can disagree. Throw it down there. I'd love to hear your take, and uh, we can continue the debate. But. I do not, uh, yeah, I, I remain unsurprised at the jobs report. This is right in line with uh, everything we've been expecting, and I continue to see this sort of outcome as long as the Fed stays on the track that they have been on. Uh, before we get out of here, listen, patreon.com slash MMT macro trader. Absolutely been crushing. If you're an active trader, active investor, check me out over there. Uh, not only is it going to support what we're doing here, but listen, we, we, the, the, we are developing some awesome tools that have just been absolutely helping us crush this market phenomenal stuff that uh, Bijou and I have going on over there so uh, check us out if that is something that you are interested in again patreon.com slash mmt macro trader uh, it is for traders investors if, if that's not, if that's not you uh, by all means don't uh, yeah yeah if you're in it for just kind of the MMT stuff no worries but if you're an active investor active trader you want some of the tools uh, that we make available check those out over there, multiple updates each week on the Patreon as well that are directed specifically at uh, at equity markets. Uh, anyway, that's what I have for today. So I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here. So until next time, good trading, and we'll see you then. Bye-bye.